Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Beer Garden. As now we are still counting down to the season end, there will be only seven meetings left. And this time we will be talking about the Saturday race card at Sha Tin. There will be eight races on the turf, and now two of them will be on the all weather track. And this time we will be talking about, of course, the two third races and also the feature race for the day. So let's start with our first race to talk about. That will be race three. It is a class four over 16, 15 meters on the all weather course. Sarah, who do you like in race three? I like blotting paper, the two. I know you've, we've talked about this horse before on our show, just been incredibly impressive uh, this season so far. He's jumping out of barrier two. Uh, I mean, you look at his form over the all-weather track and he just seems to um, progress with his style, with his maturity as a horse. You know, we, I think you can kind of put a line through his last race. I mean, yes, it was only a third place finish, but he did get himself into a little bit of trouble, which totally took him off his game and, and just couldn't couldn't do well in this stretch. But, um, you know, kind of forgiving. He spent most of this year on on the all-weather track. So we've got to see him see him really take to this this. Um, surface, which has been really exciting to see. And I think he should take the lead here. Um, and I just feel like if he gets loose, he could be a big threat to this field. Um, one horse I do got to keep an eye out for is son of McPhee, who I think will really challenge him in the stretch. Um, but I do think blotting paper is going to continue to wow us. Yeah, so blotting paper, breaking from gaze two, he should be the leader in this field. And we see that he is quite strong recently. And this time, Zach Proton on board. And Steve, do you agree with Sarah? Do you also like blotting paper? Yes, I do. First two races on the dirt track. And I do like blotting paper. It's not exactly an original selection, but he's a nice horse. He's two from 28, so he's not a prolific winner. But as Sarah says, he does go well on the on the dirt surface. And Zach Proton was on him two runs back when he won. So that's a good sign as well. So yes, blotting paper for me. He's a confirmed all-weather specialist, runs well, and hopefully he can get the job done in race two. Yeah, so Steve and Sarah will both go for number two blotting paper. And Joe, are you looking for some outsider here? Yeah, I have two value bets. So this is going to be the first one. Yeah. Is decisive action number six with Alfie Chan taking two kilos off. Now his form hasn't been great, so that he's going to try the uh, all-weather for the first time. And he, he has some form behind some horses that we've seen before, like Nimble Nimbus, Darcy Joy, Dragon Pride, Nicholson Return. So I think that uh, staying in the same distance, uh, the same trip, 1650, but trying the all-weather, I think you can see a, a little bit of improvement or a little bit of improvement there. The only thing is that he hasn't won since uh, September of of 2019 or September of last year, I should say. And um, he's not, he's it, everything after that has been like a lot of, of big, big margins of, of, of being like fifth or seventh. But I think, I think he could bounce back here. And um, I think Alfie Chan taking the two kilos off would be okay. So I'm going to go with the uh, decisive action. Number six with Alfie Chan. Yes, decisive action is now having a good value, $22. Moving to the all weather course is also quite a good decision and he should be able to bounce back at this low rating of 46. And for me, I will go for number eight, Kieran, because recent two starts, we see that he performed quite well over the all weather uh, six furlong. And also last time out, he was up to 1400 meters at Sha Tin. And both uh, runs recently, he did quite well. And this time he will be coming up to 1650. But uh, he already proved himself that uh, he is suitable for the dirt surface. And also the middle distance should not be a problem for him. So this time breaking from gate three, he can stay in a great position. I hope that he can stay in the midfield. And recently the jockey, Derek Lung, is now on fire. He is having his best season in Hong Kong. So I think that Kieran, written by Derek Lung, will be quite good for, uh, to break the maiden in Hong Kong. So to sum up race three, the first 
already raised. We are going to talk about race three for Sarah. She has her very, uh, best bet number two, blotting paper. Steve also, also agree with that number two, blotting paper. And Joe looks for an outsider here, number six, decisive action. And I will go for number eight, key run. So the second race we are going to discuss will be race eight. Another all weather race on the card, but this will be a class three over 1650. Again, Sarah, who do you like in race eight? I'm taking uh, the one here, Apache Pass. We got, um, he's five out of six on the board on the all weather track. So we know he's really favorable. His last time out on the turf track at Happy Valley didn't do um, as great as we'd all like to see him. But now we're seeing him come back to this surface where he's comfortable, where he's the strongest at. And I think we're going to see him continue to dominate the all weather track here. I think the only, uh, my, my biggest thing, threat I think against him in this race is the handsome 12. I know all eyes are going to be on him um, uh, coming off of such a dominating performance last time, but I think Apache Pass can really give him a shot for his money um, and really take the win here in this race. Yes, number one, Apache Pass, he is definitely the cost and distance expert doing quite well recently in this season over the same cost and distance. Steve, how about you? Who do you like in race eight? Well, I took the whole, the 10 horse amazing teams, a nice horse. He's three from 13, which is pretty good. And he's returned to some sort of form recently. He was a uh, first on his penultimate start. And then he was a runner up last time over a slightly longer trip. That was 1800 meters ridden by Luke Curry on both occasions. Luke Curry is suspended. So we get a very able deputy in Alexi Bedell takes over. And a very nice horse seems to really go well on this all weather surface. And yes, so he is the one for me. He's on a career high mark now, but he's only at 13 runs. So I think he's capable of more improvement. But it's a wide open race. We give a chance to Ultra Express, Helen Wisdom Star, mm. and also likes of Hanson 12 up in class after a good win last time. But for me, hopefully, amazing teams can get the job done. And a quick mention to the 11 horse Flying Dragon as well, that um, I thought he's predominantly raced over 1200 meters but i thought he was an interesting horse if he managed to see out the mile and zach Pert was on board last time he was meant to be on romantic combo this time but it's a scratching so zach pert has got a, a book of nine rides but it could have been 10. yes right race ace is definitely quite wide open i think that nearly 14 horses is having the same chance so steve goes for number 10 amazing teens definitely still improving and then the draw is quite ideal this time and joe i know that you are still looking for an outsider here your value bet here which one will do you like yeah down the bottom number 13 will be on i've uh, been on this one before when it was in winning form um back earlier in the season earlier this year uh so now he's going to try the all-weather track uh Pretty interesting to see that it is like about you're getting about like twenty or thirty dollars on it. Uh, but Dylan Mo takes the ride. He does make his red late. He's out of Sebring. Um, yeah, I mean, it, he's very lightly raced. Uh, he only races like once a month, and I think um, I think that going up in class but taking some of the weight off would be uh, would be pretty uh, be pretty good for him. It's just that he has this is going to be a lot way much more tougher company but i know it's going to be a big ask but i think he can be could surprise uh winning but he could also hit the board too getting second or third for a place line so uh others look better i know but i think that for for he does have that winning form before uh especially with antoine hamlin and, and karis teton so uh take a chance here at number 13 of uh, villa fion number or with dylan mo Yes, uh, Villa Vion mm -hmm. number 13 in race X. Currently, the price is $39. So this time we're carrying just a quite a light way, also have some good chance here. And for me, I will also looking for some down the bottom. I like number 14, Sky Supreme. He will also be my value bet on Saturday. Uh, this time, Sky Supreme will uh, be breaking from gate one. I hope that he can take advantage of the good draw because he is a uh, leader. And this time, I think that he can lead uh, easily from gate one. Uh, when he was racing in class four, I will be much more uh, confident. But uh, however, we see that uh, last season, uh, he can still win in class three. So I still believe his ability. So 
uh, Victor Long, what he has to do will be just uh, break well and then take the lead near the rail. So I think that the draw is quite a big advantage for him. So currently the price will be 9.4. So Sky Supreme number 14 here will be my value bet. So to recap race X, our selection includes Sarah, number one, Apache Pass, for Steve, number 10, Amazing Teens. Joe and I will have our value bet here for Joe. That will be number 13, Villa Fion, and I will have number 14, Sky Supreme. So uh, we have mentioned about the two dirt races on the card. And let's talk about the feature race that will be race nine. It is a class two over 1400 meters. There are so many top horses here. So Sarah, who do you like in race nine? Yes, this is going to be a tough race, and I think it could even possibly be a John Size versus Cruz race, as both trainers have three entries each, but I am taking the Cruz entry and nine, Bazinga, who is jumping out of barrier three, but he does get a little bit of weight break because he's jumping up in class, but this horse has just hit the ground running, uh, you know, no pun intended, but he's five for five on the board. I'm um, looking exceptionally well, his success is over this, this course and this distance. And I think we're just going to continue to see his improvement and see how he really takes to handling such tougher um, competition here. I mean, this, this field really, I feel like is wide open. There's a lot of talent coming in. And I do feel like the, the one bonus for Brazinga that could possibly put him above the rest is, is that weight break. Um, so I like, I think he looks really good. He looks very promising. So coming into that class too, he, I think he's going to put up a really good fight here. Yes, but singer number nine here, he will be up in class and up in distance, but this horse is definitely very talented and still improving. Steve, do you agree with Sarah? Do you have your best bet in race nine? Yeah, it's my best bet. Bazinga, I like his chance. I think Navas 2 is interesting too, as that person, the whole host of horses have nice chances. But Bazinga's two from four, and all his runs have been at Sha 10. He's a nice horse. He's still improving. So, third to Packy Treadmill last time, then second to Brilliant Way. So, I think he's on the up and uh, nicely drawn again. So, Bazinga for me. So Steve's best bet on uh, Saturday will be number nine per singer in this race. Right, we see that uh, he is still improving and I'm quite looking forward to how he performed when he was up in class, when he is up in class and up in distance. This time he will be breaking from gate three, carrying quite a light weight. Good chance here. And Joe, how about you? Who do you like in race nine? So now we're after all the, the two the two values. Now I'm going to take two short prices. Uh, Novice 2 is the one I have with Zach Burton. It's going to be the first time him riding it. Uh, did have a really good season in the beginning of the season, um, having three wins in a row, and then had to step up in class in the class twos and, and was still consistent but wasn't getting the win. So I think that uh, he mostly was having Ruin Maya as, the, uh, as a jockey. And then the last time it was Alexis Goodell. But... Um, he watched that last race against Lucky Suisse and S. He was flying at the end, but he couldn't catch him. So, um, 1400 meters. Uh, I know this is going to be, this is a pretty like talented field, but, um, I'm, I just can't, I really can't go past Novice 2. I think if Novice 2 doesn't win, anything could win, but I think Novice 2 is the one here. So, uh, that's going to be my pick. Number six, Novice 2 with Zach Burton. Right, number six, Novice two. This time, Zach Perton takes the ride, and I think that he's still improving, and then this time, the draw is quite ideal for him. And for me, I agree that race nine, there are some strong horses, definitely including the singer and Novice two. but I think that uh, number five, Master Delight, he also worth a mention, because uh, we see that he made his uh, he, uh, debut earlier in this season, in September, and he chased well to finish third on his Hong Kong debut, which was quite impressive. And then after that, he brought the maiden in Hong Kong over 1600 meters and then he was uh, raised in the uh, Hong Kong classic mile but it was quite a disappointed run so uh, the trainer John Sai decided to uh, spell him for several months and then last time out he uh, returns after the spell it was quite a warm-up one for him so I will be looking forward to him after a warm-up he will make his second up on Sunday on Saturday and I think that uh, it is quite interesting to see that Vincent Ho takes the ride because that uh, he is the first time to ride the horses from the John Size yard in this season. But uh, the draw is ideal gate two and also carrying just 123 pounds in the field, not the top ways. And I think that he is also able to uh, have some good performance in such a strong field. So to recap race nine, one of the feature race of the uh, on Saturday for Sarah, he uh, she likes number nine, the singer. And Steve also agree with that. Steve has his best bet 
Nat here, number nine, Basinga as well. And Joe goes for number six, Navas two, and I will take number five, Master Delight. So uh, let's talk about our best bet on Saturday. Sarah, who, can you remind us who will be your best bet? Yes, that is uh, and race three, the two blotting paper. The six-year-old horse has just seemed to really, this season he really seemed to shine a bit. I don't know if it's just taken him so long to really figure things out, but it seemed like it is clicked and it's looking great. We get Purton back on the horse um, who did get him a win in April. So I'm hoping we're going to see that again. Like I mentioned before, I think last time out, you can kind of draw a line through. It just wasn't his best day. I mean, yes, it was a third placing, but when you really watch the race, he just didn't look good even coming out of the gate. So it just didn't set up well for him. Um, but the, I think, like I said, just draw a line through it because he does come in with an exceptional form and and great on the all weather track. So I think Burton's going to Burton's going to give us this victory here. Yes, blotting paper number two in race three. He has a good draw and a good jockey on board. Currently, the price will be six point one dollars. Steve, how about you? Can you uh, tell us again who will be your best bet? Yeah, I went for the nine, and that is Bazinga in race number nine. And, of course, as I said, Navas 2 will be a popular choice for Richard Gibson, ridden by Zach Purton. But hopefully Bazinga can get the job done. He's a lightly raced horse. He's two wins from four. All his runs have been at Charten all over the 1,200 metres. He looks ready now for a step up to the 1,400 metres now. He's nicely drawn again. Connections go for head gear for the first time, so that's interesting to eke out a bit more improvement from the horse and yes, so a good chance there. Interesting what Joe's saying about Navas too, and of course Master Delight as well, your selection there at a nice big price too. But hopefully um, we can get a nice win out of Bazinga, third, la- third on his penultimate start, second on his last start. And uh, as I say, hopefully he can, hopefully can win. Yes, Basinga, race nine, number nine, he's quite consistent and this time climbing up for a longer distance, which will be also suitable for him. The price currently for Basinga is $5.7. And Joe, how about you? Who will be your best bet on Saturday? Uh, my best bet's going to be in race number two. That is a class four race over 1,200. Uh, Piggy Zach Bird to get a um, bundle of charm, number three. Uh, did have a win on debut uh, with uh, with Joe Marrera in May and then uh, got defeated only by two links, but he was still fourth uh, as a short price favorite of Drew Barrier 11. Uh, so he's going to carry one more kilo, but I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, he did have a really impressive victory going past one and then having to hold off other ones. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that victory, I think you could throw out the last race. I mean, even though it wasn't that bad of a, of, of a fourth, you know, he was only on like by two lengths, but I think that uh, he could bounce back here. But, you know, I mean, I think if he's blessed with a better barrier, he would probably win a lot more. He'd probably win. But I think even though it's barrier nine and only taking one kilo off, it would be OK. So, uh, yeah, uh, number three, bundle of charm with Zach Burton, race number two over 1200 meters. Yeah, bundle of charm race two number three this time. Zach Perton takes the ride. I think that the draw is not that ideal, but the horse that uh, he is still up and coming, and he was an impressive debut winner recently, so he is still improving. And for me, I will have my best bet in race six, which will be a class four over fourteen hundred meters. I like the last time winner number four, Gang of Brothers. He will be ridden by Zach Perton. We see that on Saturday because Joe Morera will uh, will still be absent and. Zach Proton gets a lot of good mounts, including some horses we mentioned before. And for mm-hmm. his mount in race six, number four, Gang of Brothers, I think that he is able to win it back to back because uh, last time it was quite impressive. He moved to Shatin for the first time and then he just made all. It was so impressive because uh, we see that he, uh, his riding tactic is quite that uh, dynamic. Before that, when he was racing over the city circuit, he was uh, staying in the midfield or even a bad marker. But last time, uh, maybe he likes the Shatin course more. So he co- could just lead till the end. And this time, I'm uh, hopefully that we can see him to show the same tactic. And because there is no leaders, obviously, in race six. So maybe Gang of Brother can take the lead again. And hopefully, he can keep till the end and win it back to back. So to recap our best bet on Saturday, for Sarah, race Race two, number two, blotting paper. For Steve, race nine, number nine, Basinga. For Joe, race two, number three, bundle of charm. And for me, race six, number four, gang of brothers. So let's talk about our value bet, Sarah. Who will, who do you like as your value bet? 
My value bet comes in in race one, which is a class five over 1200 meters. And I'm taking the three here, Melbourne Hall with uh, Alessi Bedell aboard, jumping out of barrier 12. He is jumping down in class. So he's been racing in class four company. Now he's coming in in class five, which I think is a really great move of the, of the ownership there. As he just seemed to be, you know, he was performing okay. You know, he wasn't consistent there at the class four level. So I, I feel like the class drop is really going to be great for him. Um, but he's familiar with this this distance. And, you know, he's, he hasn't run at Shotton since March, but um, where he tried out the all weather track. But we'll, we'll see how he does here. Um, he's really strong at this distance. I just see him kind of racing in the back of the pack. And I think Alexi Bedell is going to have to figure out how to maneuver in a little bit quicker come the, the stretch to see if he can get ahead um, a lot of these horses. But I do feel like he's just has that background running with so much talent in the class four level. So now dropping down, he's going to have a little bit of a head over some of these horses at the class five level. I think you're going to see some good value, though. I believe he's about twelve dollars right now. Yes, right. Melbourne Hall, number f- uh, number three in the opener. He's one of the class dropper in race one. Uh, it is good to see him finally going back to Sha uh, 1200 meters, which will be quite a suitable distance for him. And Steve, who will be your value bet on Saturday? Well, I thought I'd take Joe on in race number two. He goes for a bundle of charm. So I thought I'd go for a charm horse as well with Charming Steed. And that is number four. Nice horse. He's had eight runs all at Happy Valley. So he makes his debut now at Chatin. And he won on his penultimate start by a short head from Shining Fortune. And I think too much use was made of him last time, possibly when he was only sixth of 12 to Pleasant Endeavour. He was taken on for the lead. Alfie Chan rode him that day when he got into the straight. There was nothing left. It still wasn't a bad run. He was beating four and a half lengths. But it's interesting to see how he fares at Sha Chen. He's nicely drawn. So if there's going to be a fly in the ointment to beat a um, bundle, of, bundle of charm, I hope it is um, Charming Steed, written by Matthew Chadwick for the first time. Yes, right. Hopefully we can see the Cronella of Charm in race two. Number four, Charming Steed will be Steve's value bad. He's quite interesting horse moving to uh, Shatin, and then I think that he can take advantage of the good draw. And Joe, can you please remind us who will be your value bad? Uh, which one? Your value bad. <laughs> There's two of them. Yes, I'm going to go with Vion. I'm going to go with Via Fion. Um, yeah, Via Fion, I... I it does have ability. I've seen it win. We've had it win a couple times on 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 the beer garden before. So uh, surprised that it is that getting it is that price. But I think it's because he's stepping up in class and only taking a uh, um, only having fifty three kilos. But uh, and also getting Dylan Mo. But I think all weather debut. He, he could run. He could run a surprise. So uh, Bill Fion number thirteen in race number eight. Yes, right. Race X is quite wide open, so I think that it is quite good for us to looking for some outsider, as I will also go for number 14, Sky Supreme, in the same race as my value bet, because uh, both Vila Vion and Sky Supreme will carry such a light weight, and then both of them are jumping from a good draw, so they can uh, they can they be should be able to surprise us, so don't forget our selection. Uh, Viva Vion, number 13, and number 14, Sky Supreme, as Joe and my value bet. So to recap Kept the fellow bet on Saturday. For Sarah, that will be in the opener. Race one, number three, Melbourne Hall, the class dropper. And for Steve, race two, number four, Charming Steve. Joe will be number four. Uh, race 8, number 13, Villa Fion. And for myself, it will also be in race 8. I like number 14, Sky Supreme. So that's all for our preview on this Saturday meeting. Only seven meetings left before the season ends. Hopefully, we can bring you some winner and let's enjoy the Saturday meeting. See you next time. Bye. Hello 
。咁其實呢只馬上岸頭前置，其實對起今次佢嘅跑跑道形勢應該幾著數嘅 B 男。同埋加上輕磅騎士，咁可以換一個減磅騎士啦。周俊樂有三磅減啦。咁誒，周俊樂其實都係一個唔係幾中意放落嘅騎士，中意守住位，守住好位，甚至乎係留腳幾後。但係我覺得，如果今日練馬師俾一個拆騎指示，就話一出集，你點都要擺喺前邊，甚至乎過唔到頭都要守住喺二點。咁其實只馬。佢做得到呢個動作嘅話咧，其實應該會可以賺到前面嘅優勢嘅，因為同場冇乜快馬咧，咁其實佢俾佢自己放到頭咧，更加好可以控制個步速，入直路可以帶有帶住有一個馬位，跟住俾只馬回到氣啊，甚至乎佢係當日你放頭越走越順咧，咁啊有機會係誒、呃、有隨時可以 win 都得嘅。嗱，咁所以嘅今場咧，今日今日揀呢只馬作為冷門 win pay 之選。誒、呃，咁第九場啦，時時歡呼。咁呢只馬咧，初出個都好中意佢噶啦，已經係都有有留意佢啦。咁所以咧，佢初出嘅姿態真係非常之悦目。咁啊，再出咁都贏到冇得冇得跑咁滯噶啦。咁好可惜，第三場遇著個林地，遇著個林地高手包裝必勝。同埋波爾多，其實咁包裝必勝，波爾多波爾多再出都再贏啦。咁其實呢只馬三班絕對有優，絕對好強。好啦，咁今咁我之後再跑兩場，都跑嗰場都係跑第二啦。咁嗰場仲要輸不輸翻俾勝得出色，咁都誒、呃、叫做誒、呃、應都叫做大家都係三班好強嘅對手嚟㗎啦。好啦，今次佢上嚟跑千四，咁其實毫無疑問跑千四，我覺得應該仲更加合適。因為其實你睇佢落腳都幾慢，其實尤其上場最後二百米田達安都係打咗一邊至兩邊只馬都係慢慢逐步逐步加速，咁甚至乎佢孭住一個一重磅一百三十三磅，咁變相只馬可能誒、呃、衝得冇咁勁啊！咁其實我覺得誒、呃、時時歡呼跑千四跑到二百咧，俾只馬嘅。衝情力咧會更加好，咁其實今次就排到三檔，一出閘守住四五位，入只路田達安總早啲攞出嚟俾只馬望空，一騎落去騎上只馬，發揮到佢強勁頑強嘅後勁咧，呢場馬係我覺得有機會可以喺呢度衝出巡迴，因為呢場馬太多千四好手啦，咁啊有少爺仔啦，啊美麗再戰啦，知道再勝呢啲咁嘅二班喺依二二班度其實。叫做唔差噶啦，呢排對手其實真係有二班，其實呢場馬真正嘅二班對手唔多。咁啊，中華勝景啊，咁同埋誒二郎，咁告同同告東寧同隊呢兩隻馬都比較好似跑得多咗咁啦。咁二郎啊，更加而家呢呢幾鋪都冇前速添。咁所以覺得時時歡呼喺佢三隻告東寧裏邊，我覺得佢係最好嗰一隻。同埋你而家真情二百，好多人都要估佢得唔得？咁又係話喺神喺神喺神出嘅操練都冇，佢話特別加強佢誒真情嘅誒嘅操練啦。咁我我所我諗，我覺得係只馬嘅質素可以誒、呃、勝過佢一切嘅，因為其實呢只馬我覺得跑千四都更仲更加好過跑千二，咁所以就會將呢兩隻馬 win pay 作為過關誒。呃星期六都係比較保守啲噶啦，咁希望大家星期六可以贏多啲啦，多謝。Hello， 各位馬迷朋友，大家好，又係 Bono 講深水嘅時間啦。嗱，今次我嘅重心推介啦，就係第四場啊，五號嘅彩虹之光。嗱，佢上一場啦，跑四班同情，千四米咧就輸咗俾個匹智勝者強嘅，咁啊後者再出咧再贏喎，而家咧已經上咗三班添。嘛輸咗俾一筆咧咁叻嘅馬都無話可説啦，咁但係彩虹之光本身啦喺季中復出之後咧，其實表現咧都漸入佳境噶啦。我睇翻佢前一場啦，即係總場次啊六五二當日啦，咁啊頭四名馬入邊啦有三筆咧都係大後上嘅，啊包括頭馬嘅烈風啦，咁第二嘅紅龍，啊甚至第四個筆啦洋洋大道啦，咁啊早段咧都係留喺馬羣後邊。然後咧靠一隻路咧，就喺後邊咧，咁就衝上嚟入咗前四名嘅。咁啊，而彩虹之光啊，係唯一啦喺到一場入邊咧，就前置之下咧，仍然咧可以貫注到底。咁啊，跟住佢咧偏快補速之後咧都唔斷喎。咁反映到咧，其實佢而家喺四班咧都相當有競爭力嘅。嗱，嗰一場騎去嘅就係希威森嚟嘅。
咁而去到上一場咧，因為就停賽咧，就改配咗馬雅噶，咁跑過第二，咁叫做不過不失啦。咁啊難得就係阿偉達啊，今次仍然咧肯咧俾呢匹馬咧去騎喎。我相信啦，佢都會好把握呢個機會咧，盡量爭取頭馬嘅。啊，畢竟啦，佢下季咧都有全年嘅公司騎師牌照啊嘛。我都希望啦，可以揾到啲好嘅馬頭咁啊，多啲嘅實力左騎嘅。如果唔係咧，玩爛手啲匹馬，下次咧又落翻啲希偉森嘅手上噶啦。嗱，今次咧佢就抽咗一檔啊，預計咧前面都有一兩匹快馬咧就領放噶，佢都可以好輕易咧就跟住個巴斯位。咁啊，只要去到轉彎咧，又不識路，咁啊望空嘅話咧，咁啊憑佢實力啦，今次要贏馬咧都唔係太難嘅。而且咧佢今次都賺到啲體力優勢嘅，因為咧同場好多馬今季都博得幾多噶啦。啊，譬如嗰匹啊金象非凡啊，或者健康第一咁樣樣，其實今季都跑十幾場，咁啊到而家咧都未交到頭馬嘅。啊，反而啦，呢匹彩虹之光而家只係跑咗五場啦，呢種體力咧都仍然好充沛噶。咁所以有機會啦。今場啊，賺跑法、賺體力之下咧，可以交到頭馬嘅。啊，如果臨場啦有四倍左右啊，我認為咧都值得咧買 win 啦，同埋做咧 QT 膽噶啦。嗱，希望今次呢匹深水啦，可以計星期三萬個匹，上上有餘之後啦，咁再為大家咧帶嚟一場頭馬。嗱，今次就講到呢度啦，我哋下條片再見啦，祝大家好運，拜拜。